ओम शांति टुडे इन द मुरली बाबा इज आस्किंग अस नॉट टू टेक सोरो आई विल रीड आउट द ब्लेसिंग फर्स्ट एंड देन अंडरस्टैंड दैट एट द टाइम ऑफ द कॉन्फ्लुएंस एज मेनी थिंग्स दैट ब्रिंग वेव्स ऑफ सोरो will come in front of you but do not let those waves of sorrow make you internally unhappy in the hot season it will be hot but it is up to you to protect yourself so while hearing of things of sorrow do not let them affect the heart when you are detached from those waves of sorrow you will be loved by god those who are detached and loving to god can be filled with the treasure of happiness now baba today is telling us that in the hot season there will be waves of heat now baba describes this world as the world of sorrow kaliyug right now the state of the world is called dukh dham it is the world of sorrow so just like there is a hot season and a cold season this is the season of sorrow and when there is the season of sorrow there will be many reasons for sorrow yes there will be many reasons for sorrow there will be physical reasons social reasons financial reasons yes there will be uh, political reasons state of the country state of affairs there will be so many reasons for sorrow because this is the season of sorrow but baba says just like in the colds in the hot season you don't say that it is hot so i have to sweat Do you say that it is hot, so I have to sweat profusely? No. You make preparations to protect yourself from the heat. Yes, but not everybody can do it, uh, you know, equally because you have to afford it also. Yes, so everybody can protect themselves. but according to the affordability so if somebody can afford a fan they switch on the fan somebody can afford a cooler they switch on the cooler somebody can afford an air conditioner they switch on the air conditioner so baba says that you don't say that it is hot so i will sweat you protect yourself but the thing is you need affordability for that and similarly and somebody who cannot afford anything what will they say it is hot so i will sweat so this is our condition right now so before we came to baba we couldn't afford to protect ourselves spiritually bankrupt no power no knowledge nothing we didn't even know we could protect ourselves we were so naive but now with baba i know that i can protect myself and baba is giving me the you know the uh, what do you say the the things the the samagri you know the ingredients 
or the instruments through which I can protect myself. So Baba has given me the options. You know, just like when a person who doesn't know that a fan exists or a, a, a cooler exists or an air conditioner exists, he is given knowledge that these things exist, you can use them. <laughs> so Baba also comes and gives us the knowledge that it's not like when it is the season of sorrow, you have to be sorrowful. You can protect yourself. And what are the methods through which you can protect yourself? That's the big question. So, you know, just by being soul conscious, you can protect yourself. Yes. When you know that, you know, when you're body conscious, uh, so consciousness determines attitude and perspective. So, when I am body conscious, the way I look at events is very different. So, when I am body conscious, I think this is happening to me and that is happening to me and this is, they are talking to me and they are abusing me and they are insulting me and this is affecting me and they are doing this to me. So, this is the, this is the story that I weave in body consciousness. Yes, so yesterday also we discussed about soul consciousness and body consciousness. So when I am in the consciousness of the body, this is the way I talk to myself. They are doing it to me, this is happening to me. Yes. But when I am soul conscious, I know that it is happening, but it is not happening to me. So when you are soul conscious, you can look at an event and say that it is happening around me, but it is not happening to me. So when you are soul conscious, you know they are shouting, they are not shouting at me. They are shouting because of themselves. There is a financial situation, but nothing is happening to me. It is the nature of money, you know. Sometimes you have more, sometimes it's less. That's got nothing to do with me. I am still my peaceful, loveful, pure, powerful self in the company of the Almighty. So, just by being soul conscious, you could detach yourself from the sorrow. So, there is a situation, there is a behavior, there is a physical condition, even when there is a physical condition, you know, you know that it is happening to the body, it's not happening to me. Yes, I remember there was this little girl many years back, she came with her mother. She was I think seven years of age when she came and her mother said, we want to take the course. I said, who amongst you wants to take the course, you or she? So then she said, both Didi, we will both take the course. So I said, she's, she looks very young to me. She is, I think, six or seven years of age. Will she understand? Because our terminology is a little, you know, uh, difficult to get. So then she said, Didi, she is fully trained. You just teach. So I said, okay. Then first day, they both sat. And we talked about the soul, that this is a body and you are a soul. And then you have a choice whether to take the pain of the body or not take the pain of the body. And you the soul can choose to stay in your state of peace and happiness despite any physical condition. 
and then the next day what happened is when she was climbing the stairs that little girl she fell and then when she fell so there was a big sound so i also went outside and then i asked her are you okay are you hurt she just got up and she did this and she said the body is hurt the body is hurt i am a soul i am fine uh, the body is hurt and then <laughs> literally she came and sat on the sofa and i was still you know i was just thinking whether she got hurt or she is in pain and then after half an hour i again asked are you fine are you really fine she said didi you told me na that i am a soul and the body is hurt so the body yes the body is hurting but i am fine i can concentrate i am listening to the class so you see that this awareness of the soul is a very powerful uh, you know it's a it's a very powerful method and when you stay in this awareness or i wouldn't even say method because it's a truth so this is a very powerful state of being and when you're in that you're naturally detached from the world of sorrow and anything that happens is happening but it is not happening to you then you say then you see another reason why we take sorrow is because you are attached to the person who is uh, you know speaking those words or engaging in that behavior so and when you are attached you lose clarity yes you don't have clarity that people are doing what they are doing not because of you but because of themselves yes sometimes and not even sometimes every time somebody is speaking badly to you somebody is behaving badly with you we have been taught to ask ourselves what's wrong with me that they are behaving like this with me and when children come to the center they ask have i made any mistake why are they behaving like this with me but the thing is baba tells us that everybody behaves the way they do not because of you but because of themselves and even if you have made a mistake even if there's something wrong with you then you have to discern that independent of that behavior so baba that's why baba gives us shrimat so baba says i am telling you the difference between good and bad right and wrong true and untrue you listen to the murli and you check whether you're doing things right or wrong but even if you're doing something wrong it's you who can check it from the murli when other people are behaving badly that's not because of you that's because of themselves because even if you're doing wrong if somebody is behaving badly because of that they are also in the wrong equally nobody has the right to get angry shout scream come what may you know abuse use bad words you know nobody deserves that and nobody has the right to do that to you so baba says you must understand that it's not people don't behave the way they do with you because of you but because of themselves and there might be 101 problems with you but the reflection of your problems is not somebody's behavior 
you will see your problems, your weaknesses, what you need to correct through the Murli. We are Baba's children, we, we read the Murli every day. I can see what I am doing right or wrong from the Murli. And then our Baba is also giving me the power and the direction to correct myself. So I have to pay attention to that and improve myself. But in this world of sorrow, if somebody is giving sorrow, somebody is behaving badly, you don't have to take it as your certificate that you are doing something wrong. If you are doing something wrong, you check it from the Murli. That's very important. Don't don't do either of these mistakes. Don't make the mistake of making a person become the mirror in which you make a, see a mistake. And don't ignore the true mirror. The true mirror is Baba's Murli. So I need a mirror to see what mistake I am making. But the mirror is not another person's behavior. The mirror is the Murli. And Baba says that I must check from the Murli what I'm doing wrong and change it. But if somebody is or there is a situation or there is some bad behavior, don't take sorrow in that. So this is the second method that Baba tells us. So Baba gives a lot of, you know, ACs and fans for us to protect ourselves from the heat. So there are many ways that Baba teaches us how to protect ourselves from the heat of sorrow in the world. And Baba says that earlier you thought others give sorrow, now you know I take sorrow. Taking sorrow Earlier it was giving sorrow, but Baba says, now you know there is also this thing that we do which is called taking sorrow. And taking sorrow is a sin. Why is it a sin? So the definition of a sin is that which moves you away from Baba. Anything that moves you away from Baba and away from your spiritual stage is a sin. So the more you take sorrow, you move away from your spiritual strength, you move away from Baba. When your heart is full of sorrow, that heart cannot connect with Baba. Can it? A sorrowful heart cannot connect with Baba. Although you know in Bhakti you have heard the opposite. What is the opposite? That you can only remember God when you are in sorrow. But Baba says no. You cannot remember God when you are in sorrow. Although in the unlimited sense, when the world becomes sorrowful, then we start remembering God. But when your heart is full of sorrow, there cannot be accurate remembrance. You can only remember Baba when you are soul conscious. So when you detach yourself from the sorrow that you have taken, only then can you remember Baba accurately. And Baba says that's why taking sorrow is a sin. Because when you take sorrow, when you are under the influence of sorrow, when you feel insulted, betrayed, hurt, then you move away from Baba. And when you move away from Baba, how can you take happiness? Because Baba is the ocean of happiness. So if I take sorrow, I move away from Baba, then I cannot feel happy. Because 
the ocean of happiness is far away from me. So Baba says, protect yourself from taking sorrow because this is the summer season of the world and there will be a lot of waves of sorrow. There will be a lot of waves of, you know, behaviors and situations and, you know, at the micro level, macro level, there will be so many things with which you can inflict yourself with sorrow. But understand that you have a choice whether to take it or not take it. You are a soul. You are experiencing everything here. That world that you're experiencing is here. And what you want to play here is your choice. The world cannot come barging in into your internal world. What you choose and pick from the world and play inside is a complete choice. Which behavior, which event, which situation you want to play inside is your choice. So Baba says, understand that you have the choice to take sorrow or not take sorrow. And when you take sorrow, you move away from Baba and then all happiness is lost. So be very careful. And then today, Baba is talking about, um, you know, this sin and uh, and you know, there is this very beautiful thing Baba says, someone who see, steals a straw is the same as someone who steals 100,000. Someone who steals a straw is the same as someone who steals 100,000. And by hiding it, one cannot imbibe virtues. Now, just ask yourself, what have you stolen in life? You know, in this life, if you've stolen something, so, you know, generally as kids, you pick something, you know, without somebody's permission. Yes, you liked somebody's rubber or your, you liked somebody's pencil or pencil box or there's a book from the library you liked and you kept it, didn't return it. So, even these small things that you stole, could you forget that you stole it? You never forget that which you stole. You can never forget. It's a very interesting thing. Even if you stole a small eraser, you can never forget what you stole. Even as a kid. And the other day there was somebody sharing with me and that person said that, Didi, you know, when I was three and a half years old, I, um, there was this uh, one, uh, there was this one pencil box and I was asked to give it to somebody, you know, somebody gave it to me and asked me to give it to somebody else. And I liked it and I kept it. <laughs> and I didn't give it to that person. And he said that whenever this question of stealing comes, I'm immediately reminded of that incident. And I was only three and a half years and and it it amazes me that I was still greedy. So I at the at three and a half I was so greedy that I had this thought that let me not return it, let me keep it for myself. And then the fact that I didn't tell it to anybody, <laughs> that means I knew I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> so you see that this sanskar, Baba, we are talking about something that looks very, very simple. But Baba says, everything is a sanskar. 
and if there is a sanskar in a small form then tomorrow it will manifest in a big way and it's not like today it's small tomorrow it won't grow big it will be the same no tomorrow if you have the tendency to steal you will steal big things also i will tell you a story in this regard so there was a king and then there was this person he hired in his palace and this person was a thief and then when the king hired the person he was very sure that he's over it so he has a changed man and there were many incidents which had proved that so the thief stayed in the palace he was the minister there and he was very good at his work and many years passed and uh, he worked very well as a minister and then one day the thief wasn't there in the palace and then everybody searched and then they thought okay he was a thief earlier so maybe you know he has eloped with a lot of uh, treasures and this and that so they checked all the treasures and everything was in place and then they thought so what has he stolen then why did he run away so what is it that he took he must have taken something then they went to the stables the horse stable and there was a haystack in the horse stable which was not there and then uh, it was very amazing that he left everything and he stole the haystack and ran away so then the thief uh, so you know everybody had this question why did he do that why did he do that and then after many days he was found so there was a search warrant issued <laughs> and then he was found and when he was found then the king made him sit and he asked why did you steal the haystack of all the things that were there in the palace you could have stolen anything you wanted you were the minister you had access to everything and why after all these years you suddenly ran with the haystack and then he said you know ever since i came because i was a thief i had this thought every day about stealing this or that or the other so you know some day i would look at the gold coins and think i should run away with this some day i would look at the jewelry and think i would run away with this and every day i control myself so you know i every day sanity prevailed and then i could stop myself from engaging in that but yet that day i had this urge to run away with the haystack and then i couldn't control myself so i just ran away with the haystack so it's not about what i stole it's just about that i had this thought many times about this that and the other but that day i couldn't change my thought every day i changed my thought so it's not about what i steal it's about this tendency to steal <laughs> and because i couldn't control that so i i just did that so now do you understand that sanskar is such a big thing if there is a sanskar of anger have you seen that sometimes you are you remember baba shrimat and in a very big situation also you will stay calm you will control your anger but then sometimes in a very little thing and you got very angry and then you say no i'm good i am working on myself that's why you know that day big situation came i was very peaceful but i got angry at this very little thing so that's not big sin 
But no, it's not the sin, it's the sanskar that counts. And when there is a sanskar and I'm not careful about it, then today it makes me steal a straw, tomorrow it will make me steal, you know, thousand rupees. So Baba says, this is how it works. So Baba says, and you know what? We have been taught until now that it's not, uh, it's not the act that matters, but it's getting caught that matters. Yes, we have been told that you steal, no problem, don't get caught. <laughs> and who is a thief? The one who steals or the one who gets caught? <laughs> because we have been taught the one who gets caught is a thief. And do you know that sometimes there is somebody who gets caught Maybe, you know, in an office, gets caught uh, doing corruption and then you hear these whispers, you know, everybody does it, only he got caught, what's the big deal, you know, everybody does it, everybody of us is doing it, but then he got caught, that's wrong, but then we can't support him because now he got caught. So, in this world, you know, uh, we have come to a place where everybody is doing everything, but then you're not getting caught, so it's not a problem. So, that's why somewhere, you know, we have, the, we have come to this bizarre conclusion that you do everything, act out of lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed, whatever you want, just don't get caught, hide it well. But Baba says, now I am telling you the truth. And the truth is, you will get caught. You will get caught today, tomorrow, whenever. Until when will you, until when will you hide? Baba Indra Murli today says, Chipa nahi rahega. Nothing will ever stay hidden. So, the fact that you did it means you will get caught someday. And you know what is worse? Until that day, you will live in fear. And until that day, you will not have a connection with Baba. So, when I do something that is not Srimad, I lose my connect with Baba. Can you have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with somebody you are lying to? When you are hiding something from someone, can you have an open, you know, a very heart-to-heart -heart connection with them? You can't. If you are hiding something from someone, you can never have a heart-to-heart -heart connection with them. And Baba says, when you are doing anything which is not Srimad, which is a sin, when you are acting out of lust, anger, ego, attachment, greed, or this stealing, or whatever, and you are not owning it up before Baba, then your heart cannot imbibe virtues because you are away from Baba. That act has taken you very away from Baba. And when there is no connection with Baba, my life cannot be full of virtues, because virtues come from God. So Baba says that this is the time to imbibe virtues. This is the time to become full of virtues. This is the time to take virtues from Baba. And if you engage in sin and you hide it, A, it will never stay hidden all the way. 
but until it stays hidden you cannot have a connection with baba that's the worst part of it so baba says share it with me own it up before me if you've made a mistake if you've done anything that is against shrimat that's why we give the chart to baba what is a chart to baba chart is our every day you know um our every day what do you say account to baba an honest account that we submit to baba that this is how i've used my body mind wealth according to your shrimat and this is where i've erred i made a mistake and this honest account to baba giving this honest account to baba is very necessary for this relationship with baba to be there and baba says it is very important for you to understand that you have to tell the truth to baba be honest with baba and then what do you do when you are honest with baba you told the truth to baba then baba gives you direction yes and honesty means not just telling the truth but also taking the direction and baba says when you tell me the truth i am giving you the direction every day morli you will see that it's like a two way conversation with baba you are giving your chart to baba baba is giving you the direction and if you're doing it honestly you will exactly know that baba is giving me this direction today because he knows that this weakness is there and i have to overcome it and baba says give your chart give your honest account take directions mend your ways so hiding will not take you anywhere being honest and taking directions is the way to improvement because it is not a secret that we all have impure sanskars <laughs> and anyways it's not a secret to baba because baba is the one who made us aware of it so baba says you have impure sanskars that's not the problem the problem is how do you change that so you take shrimat you work on shrimat see what mistakes are happening share it with baba be very honest and then take directions mend your ways because hiding is not the solution owning and mending is the solution okay okay but when i give my chart in guilt in writing to baba i go in guilt that i studied murli i do yoga still i am committing so many mistakes so i am not maintaining the chart again you know this com- this comes from that belief system that making the mistake is not the problem you know looking bad is the problem but the thing is whatever you are doing is anyways adding to your karmic account and you will have to pay for it so break that old belief system that's why baba is emphasizing on that old belief system that we have this belief system make the mistake hide it don't let it reveal because when it is revealed you are ashamed no be ashamed that you did it <laughs> not ashamed that baba knew it baba anyways knows it do you know it a baba knows you made the mistake b baba knows you're lying c baba knows you're very smart you're not even lying you're hiding so that's not helping and if i share it with baba baba is not judging me baba is helping me baba is giving me directions so i don't have to focus on looking good i have to be good and baba is the only one who can make me do that so let me hold baba's hand 
and let me walk with him yes he is not he is the only one who i can share and uplift myself if i share with baba i will be uplifted sharing with nobody helps but sharing with baba always helps so do that when you give it to baba you can hear baba talking to you personally in the murli yes otherwise murli will always be a general thing because when your heart is not connected with baba you feel that baba is talking to everybody not to me but when you have that close connection you feel that baba is talking to me personally and giving me this direction personally okay break that old belief system being good is key not looking good okay om shanti